Hi, my name is Craig. I'm the technical manager here at QNAP UK. Uh, today we're going to go through our latest uh, QTS 5, uh, which is currently in beta. Um, so we have a brand new operating system. Um, so currently it's QTS only. Um, QUTS Hero will follow later. Um, so we'll jump right into what's new, I guess. So the focus of the new operating system is that we've got a brand new upgrade on the kernel. So we've gone up to version 5, so 5.10. Uh, the long-term support edition, if anybody needs that much detail. Uh, we've optimized the uh, management interface, so we've done a few changes there. Um, side benefits that you're going to get with some of these changes are you're going to get improved NVMe um, and SSD uh, cache performance. Um, you're going to get more security, and we've also been able to introduce uh, the really efficient, very fast, very secure WireGuard VPN service as part of this as well. Um, so the main benefits that you get with the upgraded kernel um, is that you're going to get a lot more security. Um, there is really, really good performance with AMD. We've done a test with our uh, TS-H2490 FU unit, um, and the performance is really, really big um, on those. We're testing it with the uh, uh, lower cost solutions as well, running um, the, the Ryzen CPU. Um, but so far, it's really giving us massive performance and better efficiency uh, with the AMD units. Um, and we can also support um, uh, more hardware platforms and uh, more built-in graphics options because we, we do put HDMI outputs on quite a few units, uh, which will be great for things like hardware transcoding, things like that. Um, not everything will get to do this kernel upgrade. Architecture limitations will stop us, um, but most of the current units will get it. Uh, more details will be available on that when we come close to uh, finalizing QTS and take it out of beta. Um, so these are the sort of bullet points, major benefits. Um, one of the best ones there is the WireGuard VPN, um, simply because it's just really easy to set up, um, very fast and efficient, um, very secure as a option, especially if you want to link, uh, say, two NAS together, really good for that. Um, we've also got a new installation wizard. I'll go through that in a moment with you. I've got a TS251D um, that I'll show you uh, this on. I'll go through the full steps from a factory reset all the way through to the uh, to the main interface. As we go through, we've got a few different um, look and feels within the unit itself. Um, so one thing you will see is along the top here, you'll get a tabbed bar. Um, so I'll show you that when we get to log in. Uh, the tabbed bar, instead of separate windows, just lets you uh, manage multiple apps within the NAS interface much easier. Um, but yes, very easy to install. The wizard's really easy and it's a bit more secure as well. Uh, one of the cool features is it does uh, disable the uh, admin account by default if you want to as well during the setup wizard to make it more secure. Uh, we do also have a notification board built into the unit. So before all of our notifications were in one area. Um, so they were all just in the notification section. So that was everything from whether your NAS had a failed hard drive, um, somebody tried to log in incorrectly, or just a sort of to-do list, things like, you know, you need to update apps or anything like that. Everything would be in one place. Now we've tried to segment those. So general advice and hints and tips, things like that will be put in the notice board. Uh, whereas the notification center will be more around the sort of NAS health things that uh, you need to do on the NAS, so uh, say somebody's tried to log in or, or or you have a failed drive, something like that, that's going to still be in the notification center. Um, we've also got the improved NVMe SSD performance, so we're really going to be able to accelerate the performance of uh, things like SSD caching and just SSDs in general within the NAS. Um, and we'll also get a side benefit where we can improve the efficiency when there's multiple users accessing the same folder. So it's going to be even better, even faster with that type of workload as well. Um, and we've also got some extra security. So for those that need the specifics, we've got support for TLS 1.3. Um, the admin account is disabled by default unless you choose to type admin as the user account you want to create. Um, so the admin account will still be there, it's just disabled, and whatever the new account name is that you create, um, they'll be given the admin privileges instead. And we've also got lots of other options in there, like automatic firmware updates, so you can get either recommended updates or essential updates, uh, same with the apps as well. So you no longer have to log into the web interface to perform app updates. If you want to, you can set the NAS to just check uh, if there's a new version and then apply it automatically for you. Um, so just to give you a summary here on WireGuard, it's just a lightweight, uh, much faster VPN, really efficient, um, and the new kernel brings us the ability to, to add this in. It's kernel integrated, so it's part 
of the kernel. It's not a, a sort of app that's installed separately. Management of it is done through our QVPN application, um, but connecting uh, multiple NAS together, let's say you want to do private tunnels between a couple of NAS, um, it's going to be really easy uh, and the performance is going to be much better, much less overhead using the WireGuard VPN. Um, finally, here's just a quick summary of which models can take advantage of the beta program. So it's only available for a couple more days, I believe, officially. Um, but anybody that's already got it installed will be able to keep it installed until it's released later in the year. Um, so here's the list of sort of the six series of models that we do support with it currently and just a couple of known issues. There are some known issues. If anybody does take the opportunity to install this, please leave any feedback you've got in the comments section below. We'll make sure that gets back. Uh, to HQ so that they can uh, implement any fixes and things needed, um, anything they might not have found uh, before it comes to full release, please do let us know. Um, it is a beta, we are trying to get public feedback on it, um, so if there is anything that we've missed, do let us know and we'll, we'll try to uh, rectify that as well. So now we'll jump straight into um, setting up a NAS with it. So largely it looks a little bit similar to a standard QTS4 device, so 4.5.3, something like that. It's quite similar. Um, you get the Start Smart Installation button, which I'll click. It wants to check that you're on the latest firmware, which I am, so I can just click Next. <clears throat> um, now it wants things like the NAS name, so I'll just call this TS251D because that's the NAS I'm using. Now here's the username. If you just type admin in here, it will still have the admin account enabled. If you type something else, such as Craig, um, type a password, hopefully you use something better than I'm using. Um, so there we've set the password and we'll click next. So when we come back to log into the NAS after the wizard has finished, we need to use those new credentials that we just typed in. The admin account will be disabled. It will not work. Um, here you can set the date and time. If the NAS is going to be uh, connected to a network that has internet access, you can choose the bottom option. Um, if you want to change the NTP server, you can. So this is an internet time server. Um, or you can just set it to pull the uh, date and time uh, straight from the computer that you're using. Um, or you could type it manually. I'll just click Next. Um, you can set static IP addresses. I'm just going to leave it on obtain automatically. Um, if you are doing anything like port forwarding VPN tunnels to the NAS, things like that, you will probably want to use a static IP address here though. <clears throat> uh, so here it's asking which uh, file share services you basically want to enable. Uh, this uh, can be changed at any time later once the NAS has booted up and the wizard has finished. Um, by default, um, it, we do enable the Windows and Mac, which basically enables um, the SMB file services and the AFP ones. Um, I'm going to disable AFP. Macs these days, they have full support for SMB, so I generally don't use AFP. Um, so even though I'm using a Mac here, I'm going to untick that one. And then I'm going to click Next. Just a quick summary of all the options we just selected. You can go back and edit them if you want. And then you can just click apply. Little warning that it is going to clear all data from the drives with doing this. So I'm fine with that. I'm going to click initialize and it's going to go off and install it. Now, if you do apply the beta to an as that's already in operation with data on it, um, you won't go through this wizard. It will just um, apply the new firmware, just like any other firmware update you've done. Um, it's just you'll be on the new the new beta one. Um, so don't worry about that initializing and losing data. That's only if you're going through the wizard. Um, if your NAS has already gone through the wizard on the old firmware and you're just updating it, um, you won't do that. Um, you won't have to erase the data. So what's happening now is it's just going to run through, um, set everything we've done, start some services, and then I'll get a little blue box at the bottom in a couple of minutes that'll tell me that I can go to the NAS management screen to log in. Um, so I'll come back to you a little bit then. We'll fast forward this bit um, just so that we, uh, we aren't sitting around here for in silence for a couple of minutes. Okay, so that's the wizard completely finished now. So now we've got the go to NAS management button that I can push. Um, so now it needs me to log in um, again, um, as we've disabled the admin account by selecting a different username. So the username I selected was just Craig. Type in the password you uh, typed in during the setup wizard and it'll log you in for the first time um, into the NAS main interface. So a couple of things we're gonna see straight away, a few pop-ups giving you some advice on things to set up for the uh, device. Um, it's brought you straight into storage and snapshots to create your first storage volume, um, whether you want the data collection to happen or not. Um, I'll close that for now. Um, so here along the top is where you'll see some of the uh, new tab features. So if I open up control panel, we get a tab. If I open up the app center, 
we're going to get another tab there so if you open up file station you get them all as tabs along the top so that you can click through them much easier if you want to switch from one to the other and um, very easy to do and um, some extra options that you've got as well is when you go through uh, the top you've got your notifications so these would be as before just a lot more concise about issues with the nas um, and then over here you've got the notice board instead so the notice board is going to give you some tips so we've got a getting started section so if we open that up it wants us to create a storage space create or sign in with a QNAP ID and set the security policy and there's different sections for different options it also would like you to enable things like two-step verification to the NAS as well um, so you've also got your standard dashboard that would have been there before just looks a slight bit different um, but this is the main uh, the the new QTS 5 um, uh, dashboard that you're going to get with all the other options within there um, so hopefully you found that useful um, this is what the the new QTS is going to look like going forward so anybody that wants to see what it looks like um, you can get get in on the preview we have the beta running for another week or so um, so that you can sign in and get it so long as your NAS uh, matches one of the supported models I showed in the slides at the start um, again if anybody does try it has it on their NAS finds any issues please leave them in the comments box below uh, just so that we can get them back to the engineers uh, maybe you'll find a, a bug or a, or a problem with it that we haven't found. So that would be useful to getting the product perfect before we release it. Okay, thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one.